kindergarten. Happy Wednesday. You're halfway through your last full week of kindergarten. Today, we're going to keep reading Ghost Town at Sundown. We're reading chapters five and six. Once we're done reading this chapter, you'll go back to the writing video to see what you're focusing on today. Remember where we left off, a mean cowboy came and scared Jack and Annie because he thought they were horse thieves. Let's find out what happens. Chapter five, Slim. We're not horse thieves, said Annie. Well then, what are you doing with my horse, he said. Some bad guys came through town with his mother, said Annie. They left him behind because he was too slow. Yep, must be the rustlers that stole my last five Mustangs. Who are you, said Jack. I'm the Mustang herder, the cowboy said. They rode through town. Then Sunset showed up all alone, said Annie. So we're taking him to his mom. Sunset, said the cowboy. Yup, Annie smiled. I named him. The cowboy put away his shooter. Well, you're pretty brave to try and rescue him then, Smiley, he said. Thanks, said Annie. Jack cleared his throat. <clears> throat> a Mustang needs his family. The bond between a mare and her and her young is very strong. The cowboy looked at Jack. Well, you're pretty smart to know that, Shorty. Shorty, said Jack. Every cowpoke's got a nickname, said the cowboy. What's yours, said Annie. Slim, said the cowboy. My name is Slim Cooley, and this is Dusty, he patted his horse. Oh, that fits, said Annie. Jack agreed. Slim was Slim, and Dusty was Dusty. So tell me, Slim said, how did you two brave, smart youngins end up in Rattlesnake's Lance? Jack caught his breath. He didn't know how to explain it. Um, the stagecoach, said Annie. We begged the driver to let us off, but I think he just must have made a mistake. Slim looked around. I'll say, he said. When the next stagecoach comes through, we're leaving, said Annie. I see, said Slim. Well, I'm going to take my colt now and find those rustlers. You didn't hear where they were headed, did you? They said they were going to camp over the rise, said Jack. Hmm, must be over yonder, said Slim. He looked at a low rise in the distance. The sun was a red ball above it. Better get going before dark, he said. Can we go with you, said Annie. No, we have to stay here, Jack said quickly. Now that Slim could help Sunset, Jack wanted to look for the answer to the riddle. Plus, he wanted to take off his boots. Shorty's sure right to be scared, Slim said to Annie. This is no job for a young'un. Scared, said Jack. Please, I want to go, said Annie. Slim looked at Jack. And what do you want, Shorty? For starters, he really wanted Slim to stop calling him Shorty. And he wanted Slim to think he was brave. Sure, I want to go, said Jack. What about your stagecoach, asked Slim. It's not coming till tomorrow, Annie said quickly. Well, Slim said and scratched his chin. I reckon I could give you some brave, smart help. I could use some brave, smart help, but you have to do everything I say. We will, said Annie. Can I ride sunset? I wouldn't say yes to many kids, Smiley, but you seem to have a knack with horses, said Slim. Now hang on tight to his mane. I'll just pull him along behind me. Slim slipped the rope off the post. Then he held his hand out to Jack. Put your foot in the stirrup, Shorty, and grab my hand. Jack did as Slim said. Slim pulled him onto the front of the saddle. Jack held on to the saddle horn. There's a picture of there. Jack goes onto the horse. Sit tight, said Slim. It's not far. Slim snapped the reins. Dusty took off with Sunset right behind him. Jack bounced up and down. His boots hurt. The sunset blinded him. Giddy up, said Slim. Giddy up, said Annie. The horses galloped across the prairie, dust flying from their hooves. Achoo! Jack sneezed as he bounced along in the sunset. The sky was dark by the time they got to the rise. 
The wind was cool, almost cold. Whoa, said Slim. Dusty slowed to a halt. They are camped down there, Slim said in a low voice, in that patch of trees. Jack saw a campfire at the bottom of the slope. He saw the horses gathered in a dark clump. One let out a loud whining. Hear that, said Slim, the mare. She senses sunsets nearby. The mare whined again. Sounds like she's tied to a tree, said Slim. I think the rest of the herd is loose. What's our plan? whispered Jack. Smiley, you stay here and guard sunset, said Slim. Right, said Annie. Shorty, you and I are going to ride down near the camp, said Slim. You keep Dusty quiet while I cut the mare loose. How do you keep a horse quiet, wondered Jack. Once the mare's loose, she'll break for sunset, said Slim. Then you and sunset take off, Smiley. Got it, said Annie. Then we'll split the wind. Split like the wind, said Slim. What does that mean, wondered Jack. Till we get to the Blue Canyon, said Slim. Where's that, wondered Jack. All set, any questions, asked Slim. Nope, said Annie cheerfully. Yeah, about a million, thought Jack. Okay, partners, said Slim. See you soon, Smiley. Come on, Shorty. Have fun, said Annie. Fun, thought Jack, is she nuts? Her lives are at stake. Slim slapped his reins. Dusty started down the ride. There was a, their way was lit nearby by the fully lit moon and a million stars. Maybe now I can ask some, Slim some questions, thought Jack. But just then, voices came from the rustler's camp. They were mean voices, followed by mean laughter. A chill went through, for, through Jack. Dusty halted. This is far enough, said Slim. He slipped off of, of Dusty. Keep him here, Slim whispered to Jack, and keep him quiet. Wait, whispered Jack. He needed more information, but Slim was gone. Jack gripped the reins and held his breath. He hoped Dusty wouldn't do anything. For a moment, Dusty was still, but then he snorted and began walking. Oh no, thought Jack. He tried to think of the rules of how to treat a horse. He remembered a soft hand, a firm voice. He patted Dusty softly. Whoa, he said firmly. To his surprise, Dusty froze and was quiet. Then Jack remembered another rule, a sunny attitude. He patted Dusty again. Don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. Just then, a loud whine came from the herd of Mustangs. They began moving up the moonlit slope. Hey, the horses! A rustler shouted. A gun went off. Jack ducked. Come on, shorty, came Slim's voice. Jack looked up. Slim was riding the mare. Jack was shocked. He had thought that Slim was coming back to ride Dusty. But instead, Slim rode right past him. As he got close to Annie, she took off on Sunset. The mare galloped after Sunset, and a band of Mustangs galloped after the mare. Bang, bang! Jack slapped the reins. Go, Dusty, he said. Dusty leaped after the Mustangs. Jack nearly fell off. He clutched the reins in one hand and the saddle horn in the other. Bang, bang! The wrestlers were on their horses now, and they were getting close. Hurry, cried Jack. Dusty cleared the rise in an awkward leap. Jack started to slip out of the saddle. He let go of the reins and he tried to hold on to the saddle horn, but his weight pulled him down. He closed his eyes as he fell to the ground. Bang, bang. Oh no, Jack thought this is the end. He opened his eyes. Dusty was looking at him. Jack scrambled up and tried to climb back into the saddle. It was hard without Slim's help. As Jack struggled, he heard shouts from the wrestlers. Their horses gave high-pitched neighs. Jack looked back. A shimmering white figure was moving across the top of the rise. The wrestlers' horses were panicking and backing away. Jack didn't have time to think about what he was seeing. He knew it might be his only chance to escape. So using all of his strength, he pulled himself onto the saddle. Go, Dusty, go, he shouted. Dusty took off at full gallop over the prairie. Jack held on for dear life as they split the wind.
All right, friends, those are our next two chapters in the book. Go to the writing video.